What's up everybody, Soren Baker, I'm Mary Amy, and today on The Great Debaters, get into a little red man, y'all. Get ready, Great Debaters. Alright Amir, so today on The Great Debaters, we're going to be talking about Red Man's What The Album, and picking our top three songs from this project. And this is extremely difficult because Red Man... This album, What The Album, is one of the most consistent albums with very, very little, if any, filler. And the skits, there's all kinds of things going on in this album, and it's got a lot of tracks. It was one of the first albums I remember that had so many tracks on it, regardless yeah, it of the length. It has 21. And I just remember when I got the album, I was like, man, this is going to be like three hours long. But, <laughs> Obviously, I was mistaken. But, that being said, this album came out in 1992. This is on the heels of EPMD. In my opinion, you got really EPMD, Ice Cube, and Easy e are the three best talent scouts in rap history. Mm -hmm. And Ice Cube, or Ice-T is probably up there too as number four. If not, just they're all number one. But, this was in the early stages and the hit squad was coming to be what it became and red man was obviously the standout as a solo artist of the crew so amir first impressions of hearing this album just before we get to the actual songs on what the album i don't like that we're doing this video uh -oh. it's too hard man um i'm happy you started the question off like that though because dr trevis man dr trevis Red Man being the personality that he already is, as many people know him for other things like MTV Cribs episodes and staying true to himself and taking videos of him driving on the freeway and just very funny things. Um, not only is he a personality himself, but he's great at making other personalities. You know, Dr. Trevis being one of them. Uh, I think starting off the album, kind of putting a theme on it, uh, with a, also a, just a crazy album cover like this. You're like, what am I about to get into? Right. And Redman uh, shows us that with his skits. Uh, he references them. He also has uncles, you know, uh, his therapy sessions. And what do we get? Dr. Trevis leading into track two. Very appropriately, also a very great sample off of a great Cypress Hill song. Time for you some know, action. Time for some action, which I'm just going to get right into it. It's one of my picks. It's creatively spelled as well. For those Creative that actually spelled. look at the song titles and how they're written. So yes, Time for Some Action is one of my top three songs on this album. I love the, the Cypress Hill sample, and I love, as people will hear me uh, say in different things, I just love this type of energy in rap songs, and it's one of the main reasons or a main reason, a big reason why I love rap so much is the energy and the music and how it's conveyed. And I also, this was being done a lot at the time, but the Go Brooklyn, that's also in the song. Even though neither he nor Eric Sermon are from Brooklyn, I always thought it was a little odd, but I still liked it because it really adds, I think, a lot to the song. But I mean, as far as what happens on the song beyond the sonic things that I just mentioned, what makes it great? Uh, the flow that <laughs> he has on freaking the whole album, man. And I love how you actually mentioned the Brooklyn thing too, because Redman on his next album has a song called We Run New York. <laughs> He's not from New York. I always thought that was funny. Yeah. But uh, Who's he, keeping track? He, he's so great. Dude, this freaking... Well, when you sample Boogie Down Productions, you gotta just leave that as it is. Time for some action. Those verses, just his flow is really. Um, usually, when I speak of flow, I'm usually getting the more you know fast rappers. I'm talking about. I'm talking about you know the Tech Nines, the Bone Thugs and Harmonies. You know people of Twist. that Twista. You know, people like that I'm usually talking about. But Redman is someone who, he can, he can rap, you know, quick. But as far as rapping on more of a normal pace, 
he's got one of my favorite flows in rap history. Okay. And I think he's so excellent. And time for some action and really just on multiple spots on this album just show that. Um, it's quite evident, it's quite obvious. I love the two long verses we get on this song and just the little punchlines he has there, him showing off. And I just, the, the chorus as we mentioned is just fantastic. And I especially love how we were about to get a third verse and then he's been told to chill out. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and he's going hard for what, what, three, four, five, whatever bars he's going in. And he's just abruptly told to stop. And I think, although I did want a third verse, I think that actually definitely adds more flavor to the album. It's like, let's get to the next song because he slaughtered that one. It's production, yeah, man. This is something that Amir and I talk about all the time on The Great Debaters. And I talk about when I do my interviews on Unique Access. Man. You know, it's just when you're adding different elements and scratching and cutting songs off and having Hurricane G on the album mm -hmm. or all these different things, it just makes it a more enjoyable listen. It's not just a song that sounds the same length of time. It's not the same execution. It's not the same delivery. It's always just all these different things going on. And that's, to me, what makes things stand out and memorable. And then... This album came out in 92, and we're talking about it in 2019. There's a reason why, because it's one of the best. And yes. that's that. So, what's another one of your top three, Amir? Tonight's the Night. That, that smooth instrumental that we've heard sampled by one of the greats as well. You know who I'm talking about. Um, let it be known. Let it be known. Big Daddy Kane. Yes. So... I love, and this is another thing that we're going to talk about again, and we just got to remind you, the production value, how he starts it off, and he's going perhaps a little too soft for Hurricane G, as she uh, tells him to, to go a little harder and whatever, and then he just goes in even harder, <laughs> and uh, he's after the gold, after that the platinum, Hurricane right. G packs the gat sun. It's just another just clever display of lyricism, of wittiness, of Red Man's flow, of his ability to accept, um, you know, just not a standard uh, track where it's three verses, 16 bars. He's willing to have someone else on it and kind of make, not a joke out of him, but a joke and then make him up, up the playing field here. And it's unusual also to have a woman doing that on a super hardcore song like this is true ice cube of course have done it on it's a man's world with yo-yo but mm -hmm. that was a specific song and you know with utfo roxanne roxanne with the real roxanne all these different things but for this to be somewhat sprinkled throughout and then also to be unusually done true. it's not a song and it's not back and forth it's like more interludes or a guest appearance type of thing, which I just thought was just like, man, this is wild. That's <laughs> true, and it's very important that you notice that, yeah, it's a woman telling him to step his game, which is, <laughs> which may sound kind of silly, but you don't really hear that ever. So I really respect that as well. Uh, and I just love how at the end of the song, it's like the record was being picked up, and you hear the little scratch, and it's just, you know, Eric Sermon, one of the greats, Red Man, who also produced a lot of this album, you know, he's really showing how multi-talented he is as well. Right. So big, big shout outs to both of them. And is that one of your top three or? Yes. <laughs> it's just so sonically smooth and very unlike, not all of the album, but unlike a lot of the album. I thought it was a nice change of pace. Even if I didn't think it was one of the best songs, which I do, I also just thought the change of pace in this of the sonics, the probably the BPMs and just the feel and the energy was so different, but that Red Man delivered, man, as he does time and time again throughout what the album. So I love that track and I think it's amazing. And Hurricane G, man, I had a great interview with Hurricane G back in the day. I met her in DC. Um, we had a great day. That was a great day. Me and Hurricane G, shout out if you're watching. But Amir. My third, I don't think is gonna be your third, so I'm gonna see what you got. What okay. you got for your third track. I wanted to honestly go all singles on this because they're all so fantastic, but uh, it's really tough. Uh, and it's really rare for all the singles to be the, the best songs of the album, at least in my opinion. I agree. Um, but Blow Your Mind was close, but, <clears throat> but no, it's not Blow Your Mind. And there were a couple runners up too. 
but I'm going to ultimately go with Washington Nuggets, man. Um, That's a great one. First off, Redman dominates the entire LP. He doesn't have really any guest appearances rapping. Um, I don't think so. I think Eric Sermon is the only one, if I recall. So the fact that Eric Sermon, the guy who helped put him on uh, big time, obviously, and, and having him on the EPMD Pam album. Smith. Shout out. Shout out PMD. EPMD, baby. Who is, I believe, mentioned on the song, if I recall. He's mentioned all over that one. But anyways, Eric Sermon, his flow is just so different than Redman's, and it's always kind of awkward, but I really like it. Okay. And, uh... Just what he's saying is awesome, and I love how, like I said, they're both collabing on the track. But Tupac being one of my favorite rappers, and just the such a random thing uh, to just take when Eric Sermon says "Hey" right. for Temptations. I love that. That's a cool little hip hop. I remember I'd heard Temptations before I'd heard this album. Okay. And uh, when I heard the sound, I was like, "What the heck? <laughs> this is where he got it from? That's so random!" And, and shout out, um, was it Moby who produced Temptations? I Easy Moby, so. I think so. So shout out Easy Moby. And then Redman just just coming in, dude, just in his verse saying, "I'm milk like two tits," and blah blah blah, whatever. Shout out to PMBK solo on a mount, and just dude, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. That is not my third pick. Okay. So I was correct that you were not going to pick my third pick, which is, drumroll please, Rated R. Dude, Rated R was another one of those with that all sound effect that they had in there, whatever that is. <laughs> I thought it was amazing. Uh, the sampling, R, Redman, Rated R, playing off of all of that. And I thought that that was one of those ones where I love it when especially the harder edge rappers sound like they're having fun making a song. I imagine that song in particular just was fun to make the way he was rapping and his energy and his vibe on there. And that's why that's one of my favorite songs on there. And then, and then sonically, I just love the beat and the production on there. And I just love Redman's whole demeanor. And that concept on that song too. Yeah. Woo! Dude, and that's and that's another thing too. Like, a lot of these songs for me, they're uh, just Redman just being witty and showing how he can flow and just be just an excellent rapper. Witty and unpredictable. Yep, <laughs> that's a good pun. But also on top of that, um, it, he does surprise you with some concept songs on here too. You know, like How to Roll a Blunt, right. which is you know just Redman just being Redman. Um, Superman Lover. Superman Lover. We get uh, uh, Rated R. And then there's probably a couple others that I'm forgetting about, but he, he's he's very talented. And to be on the production side, he's definitely not a one-dimensional MC. Very talented, and he had a great run of albums, dude. Like especially for me, this first four for me is like one of the best runs of albums in my opinion. So, dude, this album was it's it was really hard to narrow it to three, but I think that's my three for sure. All right, well that's what Amir thinks. That's what I think. What do you guys think about the three best songs on Red Man's What the Album? Be sure to hit us up in the comments section. And of course, as always, like, subscribe, and share both our videos on Rapping and Snacking and on Unique Access. I'm Soren Baker. I'm here at Amy. Check us out, y'all. Let us know. The Great Debaters. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. There will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV basketball? Yo MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national Gang bang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. It's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always gonna be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.